Welcome back to DXB Today, where we are focusing on all things careers for you today. Uh, joining us now, our next guest, Natasha D'Souza, who is a business journalist and also a speaker and a specialist in the world of recruitment, the job market and more. Natasha, thanks for being with us. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Just before the break there, we teased the, the three Ps uh, of, uh, of recruitment. Um, tell us all, what are the three Ps? So the three Ps that I'm highlighting are the pivot, the plateau and the pause. And specifically, those are three critical career transition junctures, if you will, where any one of us, especially with the pace that with the economy and which technology is changing means that we're going to face them at least once in our careers. I can say and earlier in the show, Samia talked about the number of career changes younger generations are making. I mean, I'm 41 and I've already crossed that number of 12 <laughs> already. So <laughs> it's only going to get, you know, more and more again because of the pace of change and I think because of the fact that the whole notion of a career has dramatically evolved you talked about that Tom in the beginning the idea of just having a job that you did for life job for life's gone, job yeah. for life's gone. just having a set paycheck is gone I think people are looking for that self-actualization the whole be your best self and a career is often a modality for that I think there's also you know, yes, we were saying about the job for life and there's obviously all of these new careers we were discussing previously uh, on a previous episode about, you know, Gen Z is wanting to just be YouTubers and content creators. How, you know, is that something that you, either of you bringing you in, Samir, is that something you can advise, you guide on, or do you still kind of set people towards those traditional careers to start off? For me, not at all traditional. So I, I work with people really knowing what their strengths, skills, passion, values are. And if it's a side hustle, if it's a gig, it's, if it's their own business, so be it. You can be 20 and reinvent yourself. You can be 50 and become a singer. So be my guest. Well, I know you can pivot. We've, we've talked about pivot, but Natasha, like, let's say, for example, a certain, a certain TV presenter thought about quitting it all and traveling around Asia for a year. Would that be a bad idea? That would be a great idea. That would be what I'd call the pause, where you're being very intentional about what you're doing. The intentionality is what brings, I think, allows for more possibilities to emerge from the pause. I mean, with the pandemic, we've had a lot of folks take a deliberate pause because your priorities suddenly changed because of what happened in pandemic times. You wanted to set aside more time for caregiving or to pursue an interest. You had put on pause for the longest time and now you thought, I actually want to go after this. So if you're very clear about what you're going to do in that time frame and you allow yourself to make the most of it and explore, so you're creating what I like to call parallel possibilities, you would actually come through the other end with, I think, a lot of exciting opportunities. Okay, I'll do it. Way. Another two P's to throw into it. <laughs> I know. Another possibility as well. It's a cornucopia of P's today. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not a sentence you ever thought you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> the pivot, going back to the P's, the pivot. Is the pivot easier here in Dubai where, as you mentioned a little bit earlier on, big focus on startup, big focus on SMEs. Everyone's got a side hustle as well. Mm -hmm. So one's got your focus and then a little passion project on the side. That's another P. <laughs> we'll throw that one in as well, the passion projects as well, building them up. We should have like a checker here every time a <laughs> ping word comes up, ping, ping, ping. But to, yeah, so to, to that point, oh dear, stop saying P, all right? Um, <laughs> to that point though, is it easier to, to make that pivot here than it might be in other job markets? Perhaps. So. <laughs> <laughs> well said. I am going to add, to, so from my own lived experience, yeah. I pivoted from a very corporate you know, career in investor relations into the technology startup world using journalism as a conduit. You know, I felt I'd plateaued Thanks. in my corporate career and decided that what, what else am I not leaving off the table? How can I intellectually stimulate myself? And because I love to write and someone, a good friend told me, just start writing about technology and social enterprise because I was involved in that space in Dubai 10 years ago. I thought, let me just start writing on the side. And, but I remember pivoting 10 years ago was challenging because I think it has to do a lot with the people who are sitting across from you yeah. from the other side of the table, being yeah. able to understand the story that you come with, the proof points that you have. I mean, even if I had solid proof points, like being part of restructuring a $2 billion project, the person on the other end of the table might think, I don't know, you might be um, a complex hire for us. You might end up feeling, you know, um, under, under the, not, not as challenged in this new role. So 
I think making those pivots were harder. What I found worked then, and I think it still works today, is having, knowing your story. Actually, literally knowing, here's what I did mm. in this position, here's the results it brought, and here's how I can see myself translating that you know, into this role. Mm. And that means you actually have to do, put in the elbow grease, research the company that you're meeting with, actually figure out what challenges do they have up ahead? Where do I think I can bring my secret sauce, if you will, not a P word, you know, to this But then go, to hey, this organization. <laughs> There you go. So, Natasha, let's talk a bit about plateau. So, in my experience, I've seen that when people hit plateau, they stay there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And they are stuck sometimes with fears and mm -hmm. limiting beliefs. And I can't do this, I'm not good enough. And they need sometimes external help mm -hmm. to get out of it. Um, what advice would you have for Is those that people? presenteeism? <laughs> <laughs> throw in another thing or not. Is that part of it or not? It could be presenteeism, <laughs> um, backsides on seatism, yeah. yeah. Um, so for, again, from lived experience, I've been through a plateau. I remember being in a plateau and I kick myself now when I think about it, that I let myself stay in that position for a better part of three years. And a lot of it is because, you know, one of the things I tell folks facing a plateau is to actually um, work on your mindset. You often feel when you've invested so much of your time, emotion, sometimes even you know relationships and other aspects of your life to grow in your career to then find yourself hitting a ceiling it hits you hard and you think you know how did i actually get here even after everything that i did and i think your mindset there is where you need to work on the fact that you need to tell yourself that there is more out there the whole abundant mindset and to actually put on this you know a, a fresh lens and look at what's around you and start putting you know feelers out and finding something else you know to move into because without that feedback i think if you stay mm. in your head mm. you're not getting any new external feedback mm. or stimuli that could help you change your frame of thinking it's so fascinating literally we're all just li hanging on your every word it's fascinating i wish we had more time with you sadly we do not um, but i know that people can get hold of you on instagram and, and all sorts thank you natasha for being thank with you. us Wonderful today Wonderful being here Perfect. really really appreciate it Right, now is that time. It is time for DXB in 60, and it's over to Faris Adelkar. That's right, it's actually over to Faris and Samia because we want to get to know you as much as possible within 60 seconds. Okay. So you've got 60 seconds on the clock to answer as many questions about yourself as you can. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. If you weren't working in HR, what other industry do you think you'd be working in? Media journalism. One thing you can't live without. My daughter. Oh, your motto in life and in work. Be true to who you are. Your hidden gem in Dubai. Hmm. Mm. There's so many. Can't Burj Khalifa? One. No. <laughs> the beach. No, the beach. Uh, do you have an inspiration? Who's your inspiration? Um, again, so many. <laughs> you don't want to pick anyone? <laughs> I take a lot of inspiration from Faith, so God, I would say. Amazing. Top series you've watched this summer, if any? Oh, I have. Uh, Virgin River. Okay. On Netflix. All right. Why Dubai? Dubai's home. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you have a top podcast recommendation? Yes, I love Brene Brown's podcast, Unlocking mm. Us. And the uh, what is the best TV show in Dubai? It's DXB sure. today. <laughs> If you could hang out with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? I'd hang out with you. Oh, oh yeah. also the correct answer. Very well done. <laughs> He has waited a whole year for someone to answer that. <laughs> Samia, thanks so much indeed for your time. Thanks for Thank guest co-hosting today, Natasha. Great to see you as always. Thank you very much. Wonderful indeed. to be here. Thank you. Good chat. Um, and in fact, that's not it just yet. Why? Because we've got a break coming up. But after the break, here's a little sneak peek of tonight's very special performance. Hi, my name is Shinwa Hawk. This is Isaac. This is Kim. And this is Vincent. And we are super excited to perform tonight on DXB Today. <laughs> 